Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Torrance. So today we're going to take a look at the Phaser sound card for the Apple II. And this was a card that originally came out by Applied Engineering back in the 1980s. And it's really hard to find nowadays because they didn't actually make that many of them. And Reactive Micro, in conjunction with Tom Arnold, has actually made a clone of it called the Phazor, F-A-Z-O-R. And we're going to take a look at that card and try it out, see how it works, and just let you know when it'll be available. So let's get started. So here we can see the original phaser card on the top with Henry Corbis and Tom Arnold's clone on the bottom. And you can see that the two cards are almost identical. So they consist of four AY38913 three voice sound generator chips. And so that gives you a total of 12 voices for this card. It's got the two 6522s. So these are used to communicate between the Apple II bus and the sound chips. It's got two programmable array logic chips. These are the PALs. And these were actually the hardest thing to clone from the original board because they're not something that you can just buy. They're actually custom programmed. And so Henry and Tom had to reverse engineer those. And then finally, there's a bunch of glue chips and other components. The only real differences between the two are the old board had two RCA sound jacks, so this would be for your left and right channel, whereas the new card just has a 3.5 millimeter jack, so you can plug this into any sound system. Other than that, the two cards are essentially identical. And so with this card, you were able to create sounds with up to 12 voices and this was very similar to the Mockingboard, except it had twice the number of voices as the Mockingboard. And again, there wasn't that many software titles that were actually available that took advantage of this. There was probably about maybe 30 or so that are listed in the Phaser manual. But it also came with a disc and manual that lets you create your own sounds. So what you could do is get the Phaser card and use the included software to actually construct your own music or it also had a spot for some speech chips and you can see the phaser card here that I got on loan from Reactive Micro actually has one of these speech chips installed and I don't know if it's actually going to come with that or if that's something that you have to add on afterward. But overall the card is essentially a clone of the original one. Obviously it uses much newer components so this one should last a lot longer. The capacitors are all brand new. Let's go ahead now and we'll plug it into my Apple IIe and replace the mocking board that's currently in there and see if we can take advantage of the 12 voices. So here is the phaser card installed in my Apple IIe and a couple points. It's got two potentiometers here on the top to control the channel A and channel B volume so you can adjust those. It also has a two pin input so you can plug in the regular Apple II sounds from the Apple II Logic board if you want to. And finally it's got a set of four dip switches here and these control whether it sounds just like a straight mocking board or it emulates other boards. Uh, you can consult the manual that's available on the Reactive Micro website for the details in that. And then down here we see here is the 3.5 millimeter jack and I've got that plugged into my stereo speakers that are mounted inside my Apple IIe case. So we're going to go ahead and fire up the Applied Engineering Phaser Disc and try it out. Here's the Phaser Disc that came with the original Applied Engineering card and let me just hit Control G and so you can see that the regular Apple IIe sounds are coming through the board and let's just try say the music programs. So this will just bring up a music demo or you can actually create your own music with this. So we'll just do the phaser music player for now. It's going to find all the songs and we'll just go ahead and tell it, sure, we'll just play this song. Uh, so it automatically found my phaser card in slot four. Whoa. Alright, so 
there's the phaser card playing 12 channel music and as far as I can tell everything sounds correct okay so let's go back and we'll just go back to the main menu now let's go ahead and try out the speech synthesizer and we'll see how that works so let's Go here, main menu, speech programs. So this will only work if you actually have a speech chip in your phaser card. Okay, let's do the talking keyboard. Alright, so speech seems to work. So one thing I noticed with this talking keyboard is if you hit the up arrow to repeat the last phrase, the more you hit it, the higher pitched it gets. Alright, the last thing we'll try is from the French Touch, and this is a special version of their 12 channel music player for the phaser. And thanks to our node for sending me the special version of the disc to try. And here it is. So final thoughts, the phaser card from Reactive Micro works great. It seems to be a faithful clone of the applied engineering card and will certainly be easier to get than one of those. I believe that Henry Corbis is planning to announce the availability at Kansas Fest in just a couple days. So stay tuned for details on price and availability so you can enjoy 12 voices of awesome music. Thanks for watching and see you next time.